All right, exponential functions. Here's our little intro. Fill in the chart to compare linear and exponential patterns. All right, let's talk about linear. We just came out of the linear unit. Uh, hopefully linear, you're thinking y equals mx plus b. And if we created ourselves a table here, we could start with any x values. I'm gonna start with zero, one, two, three, four. Why not, we'll go to five. And start with any y value. You know, uh, let's start with three for no reason. Just add three. we're going to start with a zero three, and then we're going to make sure that this stays as a linear function. Now, how do we guarantee that this is a linear function? Well, the rise and the run should always be at a constant pace. So if I'm running by one every time, then when I rise, I can rise by any number. Let's just say I rise by two. I'm going to add two to three and get five and keep rising by two every time I run by one. So you can follow this pattern all the way down, keep adding one to my x, keep adding two to my y, and this will keep the pattern of a linear function. All right, so that's a linear function, right? We just came out of the linear function piece. This is adding two, so as your x value increases by one, your y value is increasing by two, your slope here would be 2, right? Your rise is 2, your run is 1, so 2 over 1 being the slope of this function, all right? And it's constant throughout the entire table. Now we come to exponential. So with linear, we're adding something all the time. This would have also worked if I was subtracting 2 every time, right? Uh, that's the same thing as adding negative 2, which is why we call linear arithmetic. And then we come to exponential, and I'm going to make myself a little table here. I want to look at the differences between linear and exponential. So again, I'm going to start at zero and come down to four or five. All right, and again, I can start with any number, and I'm going to start with I'm going to choose to start with the number three again. Okay, and now zero three is my y-intercept of this function, right? That's my y-intercept, and my b in my equation so that was a critical number for my writing my equation and 0 3 here again is going to be also another critical number when i write my expand uh, my equation for exponential functions and we'll see that very shortly all right but let's start here 0 3 and this time rather than adding 2 each time i'm going to multiply by 2 each time so if i take my next step here so i add 1 so I'm increasing my x values by 1. So as I increase by 1, what is happening to my y value? And I'm going to multiply this one by 2. So 3 times 2 is 6. Let's do it again. Multiply 6 by 2 this time. 6 times 2 is 12. Keep going. Keep multiplying by 2. 24. Keep multiplying by 2. You get 48. And keep multiplying by 2 and you get 96. So... In the linear, I'm adding or subtracting by the same number every time as I move down, by, as I increase my x's by 1. And in the exponential, I'm multiplying by a number 2 or 3 or 4 every time as I increase my x values by 1. I don't have to multiply by 2. I can multiply by 3. Right? I can multiply by 5. I can multiply by 10. I can also multiply by fractions. So... I don't have to multiply by 2, I can multiply by 1 half, okay? All going to represent an exponential function. And we'll see the differences of multiplying by a number greater than 1, like 2, or multiplying by a number between 0 and 1, like 1 half, or 1 third, or 1 fourth, any fraction, and how that changes my graph and the exponential function. All right, so, so far we have two tables. Linear functions, again, adding or subtracting y by the same number every time, keeping my slope constant. And here, I'm multiplying each one by 2 or by whatever number each time and no longer having a constant slope. All right. We're going to go back to what we did in graphing. So if we graph this piece here, so we just draw a line here, and we think about what the line looks like of a, of a uh, linear function, All right. this could look something like this. Okay, where this could have been a y-intercept of 3 and a slope of 
and we could represent our rise and run that way. So rise one, I'm sorry, run one and rise two. Okay, and that would be, let's get rid of that. So when x is one, y is five. All right, and this could be, this could represent this line. So it's linear, it's constant, has a constant rate of change. And now let's see what the exponential function looks like. All right, so we're starting here at 0, 3. And this is just going to be a rough sketch. And I'm going to 1, 6. Then I'm going to 2, 12. Then I'm going to plot the next one at 3, 24, somewhere around there. And I can keep plotting higher and higher. And you're going to see that this is going to grow not at a constant rate, but at an exponential rate, and it's going to grow constantly. And if I would continue this graph, it would go way up to infinity up here, way up to positive infinity. But if I follow this graph back down, right, what's going to happen is this graph is going to come down and start to hug the x-axis. Now it's never going to cross the x-axis, which we'll see why in rules of exponents in the upcoming packet. Uh, we'll never cross the x-axis, but for now you just need to see that this is hugging the x-axis, never crossing the x-axis, and rising exponentially to infinity as x increases, and it increases by 1 or 2 or whatever. So as x approaches infinity, so as x gets bigger and bigger and bigger, the y values are growing exponentially. Now at that x value, at that x-axis here, since we are never crossing it, a way to tell our readers that this is never going to be crossed is we can draw ourselves a dotted line right at that axis, right at that axis. And this dotted line, let me type this in here, has a special name, and I'll type it. This dotted line is called a horizontal asymptote. So this dotted line that we just drew here is called a horizontal asymptote, which means that my graph will get very close and very close to that line, but never cross that line. And the horizontal asymptote exists at, if we think about when we wrote linear equations, so if we think about when we wrote a linear equation, and it happens to be a horizontal line, this would just be the equation of y equals and then whatever y value happened to go through. So in this case, maybe y equals 6 or three, four. So every horizontal line takes the form of y equals that number. So this horizontal line that we just drew here at the horizontal, as the horizontal asymptote has an equation as well. And this is a horizontal asymptote at, that's at y equals zero. So your parent function of exponential functions will have a y-intercept, it will have a horizontal asymptote, and increasing from negative infinity to positive infinity on the x-axis, your graph is hugging zero, never touching zero, and rising to infinity. So your domain of this graph Right, can be written can be written in one of two ways. So if you want to write this as an inequality, so your domain of this graph is your x values can be anything. So going from negative infinity all the way through positive infinity and interval and writing the inequality of this or an interval notation, you could simply write negative infinity to positive infinity. So you take one of two forms and your range of this function. Well, how low is this graph going? The absolute bottom of this graph is approaching zero, but never touching zero. So zero less than y, so never. So I'm going to be greater than zero. So y will be greater than zero, but never touching zero. Otherwise, it would be y is greater than or equal to zero, but that's not the case. And less than, well, how far is this? Is going all the way up to 
pos infinity up here, so all a to pos infinity, and another notation for this simply is parentheses, zero, comma, infinity, and close it. All right, so when you do not include the zero, you could put parentheses here. All right, this is interval notation. I can show you a separate video on that. Um, but either one of these notations, the two notations, the notations we've been working on in class so far have been with the inequalities. Okay, so stick to those. So quick little recap as we're looking at this. Linear tables, linear, uh, linear tables and exponential tables. Your tables are increasing by the same amount every time, right? Adding or subtracting the same amount from your y values as your x values increase by one. And on the exponential tables, you're multiplying by a number every time to get to the next y value here. So adding or subtracting, multiplying or multiplying by a fraction. All right, and then the graphs, linear is a straight line with a slope, a y-intercept, um, and the exponential is no longer a straight line. All right, it's going to curve and going to grow exponentially as your x values get bigger and bigger and bigger. So then the question I would challenge you guys with is, which salary would you choose and why? Would you choose five cents and double your salary every day? Or would you rather begin with $200 and increase $10 every day? All right, so either option. And some of you guys are saying option one, double every day. Some of you guys are saying option two, um, take the 200 every day and go. Um, and I'm not going to say you're right or wrong in either scenario. Um, either case can be true. And what I would question is, well, how many days are we talking about here? Are we talking about for two days? Are we talking about five days? How many days are we actually talking about that you're going to double my money? Is it going to be something that's ongoing? Or is it just for a day or two? So it's something I'd want to know. So if I'm starting at five cents, then I'm starting somewhere here on the x-axis, five cents. And I'm going to grow exponentially. So my graph is going to start very, very low from the negatives, which will never get there, and then continue up. So this is my time. However, in this graph, I do not have time because time does not go negative, so I would start there and continue up in that fashion. Where if I have $200 per day, or begin with $200 and then grow $10, $10 a day, well, I'm going to start very high in my graph. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this one here. It's my five cents somewhere down here. And I'll just say my 200s way up here somewhere. Not proportional there, but, and this is going to grow at $10 per day, but only increase, start with 200, but only increase $10 per day. So what's going on right here? And we've talked about this, right? This is your intersection. And what does that intersection mean? It means that some time t, right, at some time, the dollar amounts will equal one another. Okay, so the question is when? Well, if this is, if I'm only getting five cents a day in this time interval, and $200 for, and $10 a day in this time interval, then it doesn't matter which one I choose, because they're both going to give me the same amount. But anything less than this time, then everything on Everything on the exponential function has a y value that's lower than everything that's on the linear function. So if it's below, it's before this time, I would choose the option B. However, if the time span goes past this time, now my exponential function is growing and growing and growing at an exponential rate, well then I would take my exponential time. So if they said they're going to take my money and or let me double five cents a day for 30 years, I would definitely go with this one. Or if they only said, oh, I'm only going to do this for five days or ten days, then I would definitely go with the linear function. Now, very at some point very soon, we're going to show you how to get that point of intersection, and we're going to do that with a graphing calculator, which will be in the next couple of videos. 
So here's our next page in the packet. Um, we have a piece of paper, and we're going to cut this paper into two pieces, and then in half again, and half again. And this is a ballot. And again, you're starting out with one whole paper, you cut it in half, you fold the paper, you cut it again. Now you have, so here you have one page. So before you cut it, you have, so I'm going to put it here, before you cut it, you're going to have one ballot. You fold it in half, you have one cut, now you have two ballots. After you fold that, you fold that again, and if you unfold this page, then you'll have, so here you have one cut, two ballots, two cuts, then you'll have four ballots, and that's where this table comes in. So we got one cut, two, two ballots, two cuts, four ballots, three cuts. If you follow this pattern, you'll see that this is going to double every time. So two times two is four, four times two is eight, eight times two is 16, 16 times two is 32, 32 times two is 64, and third, oops, just joking, 64 times two is 128, 128 times two is 256, 256 times two is 512, and then 512 times 2 is 1024. And again, this is multiplying by 2 every time there. All right, and I'm just going to put dot, dot, dot just for. Okay, so all the way down. So after cutting this in half 10 times, you've now created 1024 ballots. I don't know if your your scissors are going to be that strong, but eh, theoretically this could go on forever and ever and ever. All right, so what does this look like? So if I were to try to graph this, I'm going to count this by tens. Let's see. Can I do 10 here? Can I do 10, 20, so on. Let's see if I can take this long. 20, pull, 30, and I'm going to keep counting by tens here and you get the point and then this will go on to 50. Oops, joking. Use a pen here, it's a little easier. 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, and 100. Obviously I'm not going to reach my 1024, but let's see what happens here. So at 1 I have, so here's 0, here's 1. At 1 I have, I'm going to go in red, 2 ballots. At 2 I'm going to have, here's 2. So at zero, I'm sorry, at zero, I'm going to have one ballot. At one, I'm going to have two ballots, a little bit higher than that. At two, I'm going to have four ballots. At three, I'm going to have eight ballots. So in my first my interval of zero to three, I'm not even crossing that 10 mark yet. And then here's four. At four, I'm going to jump to about 16 ballots. At five, now I'm jumping to... 32 ballots, and this is where you're really going to start seeing this exponential function grow. At 6, I'm jumping to 64 ballots. At 7, I'm at 128, and I'm already past my graph here. So here's my exponential function, roughly. Going all the way through, and that's just graphing the first. Seven ish. All right, and that's how quickly the exponential function grows. And again, if I were to reach 10, I'd be way at 1000 here. Now I scaled my y axis by tens and my x axis by ones. Um, if you have graphing calculator, you could definitely do this on a graphing calculator very easily. But before you put this on a graphing calculator, it'd be nice to see what an equation looks like. So here's a part right in the equation. All right, so we have so far this year. We've done f of x equals mx plus b in function notation, or y equals mx plus b. Then we talked about y equals or f of x equals in function notation, the absolute value of okay, the absolute value of x, but let's do this one, a times the absolute value of x minus h plus k. Right? So we've had these functions now too. And now the next function we're going to have is, again, 
It's the exponential function, I guess. You can write y equals or f of x equals. Okay, your choice for now. And I'm going to have an a value times b to the x. And I'm going to stop right there. I'm not going to talk about the h or the k at all. So we're not going to move this graph. Uh, we're not going to shift the graph horizontally or vertically uh, for time being. We're just going to talk about how the a and the b come into play from our table. Now, the last slide we talked about, I said that the 0, 3, and the 0, 3, the y-intercept will come into play here. Okay, so here it is coming into play again. So my y-intercept is here, 0, 1. So we said, without making any cuts, I have to have cuts and ballots. Without making any cuts, I had one ballot. Well, this here is a critical value. I'm going to take the 1, and that 1 is going to be my a value coming from my wiring set. The next piece here is my b value. Well, what am I multiplying by each time to come down and get my next y value? And that's called the growth factor. So let me write that one. Let me write that one now. And we're going to come to this word again over and over and over again. So this is called the growth factor. So the growth factor is what I multiply by each time. And that's going to be my b value. So b is equal to 2. So I went from 1 cut to 2, 2 cuts to 4, and I'm multiplying by 2. That b, what I multiply by is the b value. So if I wanted to rewrite this equation, this is f of x equals 1 times 2 to the x power. And that equation will represent this table and that graph. Okay, so I'm getting the A value from the y-intercept. I'm getting my B value from, which is called the growth factor, by looking at the table and seeing what I'm multiplying by each time to move down the table. So 1 times 2, 2 times 2 is 4, 4 times 2 is 8, 8 times 2 is 16, and so on and so on. Okay, and that's how you would get your equation. Describe the pattern you see in the table, what we just said, the pattern is doubling each time. So as x increases by 1, the pattern is doubling each time. Right? So the y value is doubling each time. Doubling for each increase in x. Uh, maybe I'll use my typing tool for the next one. Uh, how does the growth pattern show up in the graph? Again, you can say the y values are doubling again and increasing rapidly. And increasing or exponentially. How does the growth pattern show up in the equation? Okay, so the growth pattern is the b value. The b value is equal to the growth pattern or I'm going to call it the growth rate. Okay, growth pattern, growth rate. And is the relationship linear? And no. And we could just simply see from the graph, it shoots up exponentially from the graph that we just showed. All right, so that's the first two pages of the packet here. All right, and there's a equation here. Again, this is slightly off. We Our equation it was f of x equals a times b to the x. So we maybe want to throw that a in there. Okay, so again, the b is the growth rate. Okay, so that b value is the growth rate. The x value is the input. And the f of x itself is the output. All right, so we have a, that's my y-intercept. b is the growth factor, okay, which we see what the y values are multiplied by each time. Okay. Any questions? Please ask on Google Classroom or comment on our next slide. Thank you.